Hey everybody, Zach here from Primrose Productions Music. Today we're gonna take a really in-depth look at dialing in metal guitar tones. This is probably going to be a very long video, so I'll have timestamps in the description so you can jump to different sections if you want to. But yeah, it's gonna be a really long video. It's probably going to be the most in-depth look at dialing in a metal tone that you can get for free. A lot of this I haven't seen anybody talk about for free on YouTube. So I really want to help you guys get some of the greatest nuggets of wisdom that I can possibly give you for how to dial in a great guitar tone. So let's dive into it. A big part of choosing the right guitar tone is going to be picking the right amplifier and cabinet combination to work with your sound, whatever the sound is you're going for. But I understand that a lot of people don't have multiple amps or cabs just lying around. A lot of you that are gonna be watching this video have one amp and one cab to work with. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. We're gonna to be using one amp, we're gonna be using one cab, and we're gonna be dialing the best possible tone we can get on that amp. And as you'll see, we're actually using a Bugera head. So it's not a crazy expensive head. It is going into an orange four by 12. So that's a little pricey, but the head itself, it's not a crazy expensive amplifier. And I just want to do this to show you that you can get a great tone with not the most expensive gear. Again, if you have multiple amps, multiple cabs, that's great. You're going to want to dial down your choices to which amp and cab combination works. But for the majority of you, you have one amp and one cab. So the first thing you want to do is you want to set your cab up as far away from the actual amp head as possible. In my situation, I have a separate control room and live room, so I'm able to set the head up in the control room and run the cable through out into the live room where the cab is. If you only have one room to work with, then you just want to set up the amp and cab as far away from each other as you can. So just get a longer speaker cable, put the cab on one side of the room, put the amp head on the other side of the room. If you are working in one room, once you have the cab and amp set up separately, then you're pretty much gonna be starting to dial things in, listening in the room. If, like me, you have a separate control room and a separate live room, you're gonna be in the control room dialing in the amps, so you need a way to listen to the sound that's coming out of the cab in the room. So you're gonna set up a room mic like I'm doing here, and that's what you're gonna be listening through to hear if the amp sounds good in the room. And that's the whole point of the first step we're not miking the cab up directly yet. We need to make sure that the amp sounds as good as it can in the room first. So we got a room mic set up, we got our cab set up, we got our head in the other room. So now we're just gonna loop a section of a DI track over and over while we dial in the amp tone. We're gonna dial in the amp on channel two and channel three, cause those are the high gain channels. And then we're gonna pick which one we like best. The first thing we're gonna do for both channels, we're gonna set everything to noon. All the controls are gonna be straight up and down. And then we're gonna go through each parameter and we're gonna sweep all the way down and all the way up for each individual knob so we get a good idea for the full range of what each knob is gonna do. You don't wanna just go and be like, oh, I think this should go to like seven o'clock and without actually sweeping the knobs first because you don't know what the full range of tone of each of those knobs is gonna do. So just do a quick sweep of each knob individually and then kind of pick the spot that sounds best. So let's start with dialing in channel two. So we're looping this old DI and we're running it through an SMG cock blocker gate pedal and then through the amp. So that's the only thing in the signal chain before the amp right now is the cock blocker gate. Everything else is just the amp in the room.
So let's try adding an overdrive pedal to channel two. Channel two sounded pretty good, but I feel like I could use some tightening up and a little bit more gain. So we're gonna throw a Maxon OD-808 in front of it. It's just a Tube Screamer style overdrive. And yeah, let's see what happens when we throw that in the loop. If you ask me, with the overdrive, it sounds a lot better, but let's try dialing in channel three. All right, so now we're gonna try dialing in channel three. We're gonna start the same way, everything's at noon, and we're gonna sweep each knob to get an idea for the full range of what it's doing, and then pick a sweet spot for each one and just do that until it sounds good in the room. All right, that also sounds pretty good, but let's throw an overdrive in front of that as well, because again, I think it could be a little tighter and a little bit more gain.
right, so ultimately that does sound better with the overdrive in front of it. However, I think for this particular situation, I'm gonna use channel two. It sounded a little better to me overall. It just sounded more full in the range I needed. Channel three sounded a little bit thin and just, it wasn't, it still sounds fine, but it's not quite what I'm looking for here. So we're just gonna go with channel two as the bass tone and that's it. So we're gonna leave the amp set to channel two with the settings we had on there. We're also gonna have the overdrive on cause I liked it better with that. Now on to the next step. Now for the next step, we're still running the amp with the same settings you just saw into the cab in the other room. We're still listening through the room mic, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on some headphones so we can hear what it sounds like in the room mic. And we're just gonna move the cabinet around the room until we find a spot in the room that sounds best. I know this sounds a little bizarre, but the way reflections in the room work, some spots are gonna be better than others. Some spots you might accidentally get some brittle high end, some spots you'll probably get a fuller low end, and some you might get a really tight mid range, depending on where in the room and the cab is and which way it's angled. So we're just gonna, again, listen through the room mic, and run the same looped DI through the amp and we're just gonna move the cab around until I find a spot that it sounds good to me. Alright, we found a spot that sounds really good in the room, so now we're going to start worrying about actually miking up the cab itself. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put these gobos on either side of the front of the cab so that when the mic is in front of it, it's only picking up the cab sound. It's not going to get any extra room reflections from the sides. Now even though we're pulling out a mic for the first time for the cab, that's not going to necessarily be the final mic or setup. What we're gonna do is we're gonna test each individual speaker in the cabinet because believe it or not, they all will sound a little bit different. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take an SM57 just cause it's a nice standard, easy microphone to use. We're gonna put it dead center on the first speaker being the top left speaker and we're gonna record a clip 
through that speaker and then we're gonna move it to dead center on the second speaker. Then we're going clockwise around the cabinet. So we're gonna do that for each speaker, put it dead center on each speaker in turn, and then we're gonna listen back and see what each speaker sounds like. Unfortunately, the downside to this orange cab is the bright grill cloth it makes it really difficult to see through the cloth to see where exactly the speaker is. So sorry that this shot is a little dark. I had to turn the camera light facing towards the ceiling so it wasn't as bright on the grill cloth so I could still kind of see through it because you want to look through the grill cloth and make sure that you're positioned on the speaker where you want to be. And in this situation, we're trying to be dead center on each speaker, so I need to make sure that that's happening. Alright, so right off the bat, speaker 4 sounds muddy to me, speaker 3 sounds too harsh to me, so right away we're down to speaker 1 or speaker 2. Now speaker 2 sounds nice, but it does sound a little thin to me overall. There seems to be something missing in the frequency range there. And speaker 1, although it is a little bit harsh, seems to have a fuller overall sound and especially a tighter upper mid-range, which is going to be really helpful. So we're going to go with speaker 1 here because it's going to be pretty easy to take out some of that harsh high end with an EQ, whereas with speaker 2, although it sounds pretty good overall, it's missing something and it's going to be hard to add in frequency information that's not there artificially. So... In this situation, I think speaker one is the best bet. All right, now that we've chosen a speaker, we need to choose a microphone. Now, some of you may only have one microphone. If that's the case, you can skip this part. You're just gonna work with what you have with the one mic. But if you have multiple mics, even if you have multiple mics of the same kind, like for example, if you have multiple SM57s, you want to try each one of those mics on that speaker until you find what you're going for. The reason for this is just like each speaker is going to be different, each microphone, even of the same model, are going to sound slightly different. And a microphone really is just the exact opposite of a speaker. They function the same way. A mic is turning physical energy into electricity, and the speaker is turning electricity into physical energy with the movement of the capsule or the speaker itself. So just like each speaker is going to be a little different, each microphone is going to be a little different. So we're going to start with three SM57s. We have three different ones. We're going to put them all dead center on speaker one. Listen to what each of those sounds like. Then we also have two Sennheiser E906s, and we're going to try those. Same thing, dead center on speaker one, see what those sound like. And what we're going to do is we're going to compare the three SM57s and pick the best one out of those. Then we're going to compare the two E906s and pick the best one out of those. Then we're going to take whatever one in each category and compare directly the best SM57 to the best Sennheiser E906 and choose which one we think sounds better overall. So let's check out the 357s. <laughs> Thank you. 
So for these three, I think I'm gonna pick the first one. I think SM57 number one sounds the best out of these three mics. Now let's try the E906s. So out of the E906s, again, we ended up picking number one. It sounded better than the second one. Now we're gonna compare the first SM57 that we picked to the E906 that we picked. Let me just adjust the volume here, because we don't want to fool ourselves into thinking that one's better because the other's louder. And here I'm choosing to go with the E906. The SM57 just sounded a little bit brittle, and the E906 just sounded fuller to me, which I can work with a lot more than the brittleness of the 57. Now at this point, a lot of people would be really close to done. You would, once you have the right speaker and the right microphone on there, you're pretty much ready to go. But in my case, I happen to have a couple different preamps to choose from. So we're gonna try going through the two different preamps and see if there's a difference there. I wanna make it clear here that the preamp is not gonna make anywhere near as much difference to the tone as the amp or the cab or the mics that you pick. The biggest change in any guitar tone is really gonna be the cab in the room and what works there. Next is gonna be obviously which speaker on the cab and then which microphone. So the preamp, you could really go give or take. It's not the biggest change, but because we have the ability to do it here, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna compare the preamp on my Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 interface to the preamp in this Behringer Ultragain Pro Mic 2200 preamp. The Behringer does have an EQ section. It has a low pass and a variable band EQ, but the EQ section is turned off here. It's only going through the preamp section of this.
So both preamps sound good. I would be fine using either one of these, but in this case, I am actually gonna pick the Behringer. I felt the Focusrite had a really solid low mid range, but I felt it was kind of lacking in the upper mid range. And in this particular instance, I'm looking for a more solid upper mid range, which the Behringer was delivering on. So we're gonna pick the Behringer in this situation. Now that we've picked our preamp, now we can start to make the final adjustments to the mic placement itself. So first placement we're gonna do is same one we've been doing directly dead center on the speaker and let's hear what that sounds like. It sounds pretty good, but it's a little bright. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move a little towards the outer edge of the speaker. Really, we're gonna be right on the edge of the dust cap on the speaker, so where the dust cap actually meets the rest of the cone of the speaker. And we're pretty much gonna be putting the mic right about there. Here, I'll show you a diagram real quick. If that's the speaker and that's the dust cap, the microphone's gonna be right where that green dot is. You may or may not notice, depending on the size of the dust cap, most speakers, We'll have visible these two little dots. They're little glue dots that are on the speaker. And you can't really see them in this cab, but I know that on this cab in particular, they the glue dots are on the inside edges of all the speakers. So you, I generally tend to like to put the microphone closer to the side with the glue dots on it. I feel like they almost act kind of like a moon gel does on a drum. It just dampens it a little bit and just gives it a little more control, a little bit of natural compression. So when people talk about miking the edge of the dust cap, like, or the side of the cone, like where that, where those two things intersect, they usually nobody mentions about the glue dots. So I will here, if you can see where the glue dots are, try to pick that side when you're moving towards the edge of the speaker because it will give you a lot more natural compression. So we have this mic lined up so that it's on the edge of the speaker and the dust cap and the mic is also angled towards the center a little bit at about a 45 degree angle. All right, so that sounded a little too dark. So what we are gonna do is we are gonna scoot this in a little more back towards the center, and we're also going to turn the angle of the mic a little more flush, so it's a little more on axis. It's not totally on axis, but it is more on axis than it was in that last placement. All right, and that placement sounds good to me. So I think we have our guitar tone. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna reamp the whole song real quick, and then I'm gonna show you the comparison between the old tone that we had, the new tone before we processed it in the box, and then the new tone after we processed it in the box. And I wanna make it clear that the processing in the box was nothing crazy. We literally did a high pass to about 90 hertz, a low pass to about 10k and then I think we notched out two little frequencies uh, in the upper mids I think it was like 6.71 and like 4.8k uh, so there were just a little like 1 dB notch out of those two and then we put it through a limiter so that just to catch some of the peaks a little bit then we also used a multiband compressor to compress the low mids for when the palm mutes come in. And so for this, I've talked about this in other videos, you can go check those out. But basically the low mid band of the multiband compressor is just gonna be tapping the edge of the guitar tone when the uh, palm mutes are in there because palm mutes automatically add a lot more low end frequencies to the guitar tone. So for the rest of the time that there's no palm mutes, it's really not doing anything. But when the palm mutes come in, it's just giving a little bit of compression to control those that low mid boost. So let's check out the original guitar tone we had. That's the red one here. Yeah. All 
and it sounds pretty fucking bad. So uh, now the yellow track here is the unprocessed new guitar tone, so let's check that out. Yeah. And it's already sounding light years better. Now finally the processed guitar tone. Again, we didn't do much processing wise on the guitar here. A little bit of EQ, a little bit of compression. But this is what this sounds like. Yeah. So, so light years better. Real quick, one more comparison. Here's the original track. And here's the new tone that we got today with this method. So that's pretty much it guys. That's every step that you need to go through to get a great guitar tone. Like I said earlier, if you have multiple amps and cabs, then in the part where you're checking to see if it sounds good in the room, then you're gonna wanna try different amps and different cabs and see which one sounds best in the room. But most of you probably only have one amp and one cab, so I tried to stick to one cheap amp and one cab to make it the most applicable to your situation. And to show you that you can still get a monster fucking guitar tone with not that much equipment, not that expensive equipment. So I hope you guys really enjoyed that. Like I said, that was a really long video. I knew it was gonna go really in depth, but I wanted to show you every single step in the process to dialing in a fantastic guitar tone. Let me know in the comments which of these tips you never heard about before and which one you think is gonna be the most helpful to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you in the next video.